Hi, I'm doing this video to address a topic that was frequently asked around here and not just in my community. What do you need or what does it take for you to become an exquisite lover? If this is something that is of interest to you. So I made some notes because I wanna stay on track. So every now and then I'll be taking my you know, eyesight down, but I'm just reading from my notes. So I wanted to let you know. All right. I'm also going to put uh, the structure of the video under, so in the description, so that you have an idea what to follow in this video, all right? So enjoy. So first of all, let's look at what it actually means to be an exquisite lover. And it isn't about offering or providing the perfect one-of-a-kind experience that nobody's ever had with anybody else before. It is as far as I'm concerned, as an intimacy coach, about being able to provide what you need and what your partner or partners need at any given moment. What you need and what your partners need. It's purely desire and need oriented. So why is this? First of all, I understand that not everybody has the time or the drive to actually dive into taking a, an extensive reading list just on this topic and taking extensive classes and taking coaching or therapy or any type of um, apprenticeship. You know, they don't, not everybody has the time to invest hours and hours and days and months and years into working on this topic as a personal growth effort. I also understand that many people understand or think of great lovemaking in terms of experience. Well, I have a few um, caveats here. You can sleep with as many people as you want. That doesn't mean that it's always the kind of sex or intimacy that is going to make you better. Yeah, it might be satisfying, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you also grow just by having sex with tons of people, dozens of time with each one. So um, the quantity doesn't always equate quality. And that's something extremely important to consider. That's one of them. And the other one, we also have like, an intimate relationship is not based just on sex. But this is one of the key ingredients in a relationship. There are extremely few people who would engage and commit to a platonic life partnership or marriage or relationship. Most people want the juicy, exquisite benefit of sex with the person. So it's definitely part of the structure. It's not all, granted, but it's part of that and it can't be denied or overlooked. So <clears throat> what are the impediments, first of all, that might come into the way of exquisite lovemaking? So th these are impediments overall, not necessarily related to you as a person. First of all, there's never enough time to actually sit down and really give it your best shot or Sometimes you don't have the energy to provide or be a partner in a really intense and exquisite experience. It does take energy to actually create or co-create a beautiful, intense experience. At other times, there's just not a juicy mood. One of the two or one of the many or both or all might not have always a juicy mood. And it might actually take a while until they reach that juicy mood. Another one is, well, we all have shortcomings and the ability to handle those shortcomings actually doesn't come that often in people, all pun intended. So what do I mean by that? I mean feelings or desires that are incompatible or just they can't be expressed like shortcomings as in the blockage or the inability to communicate what one wants or to communicate across to the other person to make themselves understood to the other. Another shortcoming might be a person that can't or won't 
listen. They can hear that you're talking, but they can't really listen. They, they don't tune into what you are saying. And for some people, a shortcoming is how to actually seduce, even within a committed relationship. How do they seduce? How do they entice their partners into intimacy? Yeah, that, that's a thing. <laughs> um, another shortcoming is that maybe one person just, you know, they're a great listener and all of that, but they lack techniques or tricks in their repertoire to actually help them vary or offer a bit of spice into the experience. So the ability to handle these shortcomings is actually a, a skill or something that not everybody has. And that is a hurdle in the path of intimacy. So bottom line, if you're watching this video, you're interested in growing, in developing in any way, shape or form that will help you live and offer or co-create more exquisite experiences for yourself and the people that you're intimate with. Well, as an intimacy coach, here are some things that I consider important and that I've seen in the years that I've done coaching on this topic, many people struggled with or didn't have an idea on, or for whatever reason, they were resistant to working on them. So I have, um, how many did I write here? I have five things. So I, I made a list because I didn't want to forget anything. And the first one, and I marked it with zero, like that's bottom line, everybody should have this. Relaxation and deep breathing. Unless you're the person that is into intense, high intensity, hardcore engaging sex or high impact sex, then a relaxed body, um, inner disposition, atmosphere overall, is something that will be extremely valuable and useful to you. And let me assure you that not everybody relaxes in intimacy. And that's partly because of a lot of um, worries, frustrations, anxiety, fears, um, complexes that they have around this issue. So um, everybody tends to have a soft spot here, maybe a sensitive spot. Maybe they haven't worked enough on the topic, or maybe they are just self-conscious that maybe they're not perfect, or they've had some issues in the past. And just the thought of being intimate with somebody sometimes might keep them, you know, they might, it might keep them on their toes, a bit wired, a bit, you know, tensed. So relaxation, the ability to relax, especially when you're the type of person that wants to be an exquisite lover, but not necessarily in a committed relationship, or you want to be an exquisite lover to somebody that you're so into and the stakes are so high that you tap into your anxiety. So it short circuits your relaxation. So the ability to relax is something that I would always encourage people to work on. And I mentioned here about deep breathing. Breath is the hands down first tool that can help you relax. It can help you reduce your heart rate. It can help you, and I'm speaking from experience, reduce pain, physical pain. It can help you reduce worry, tension, anxiety, and so on. Again, speaking from experience. So just deep breathing can also do that. Depending on how you do it, it can also intensify or amp up the tension that you have, the energy that you have, arousal that you feel in your body. And that's especially useful for the people that are into high impact sex or high intensity sex. You know, it's not just high intensity interval training <laughs> for fitness lovers out there. There's also high intensity sex. I'm, I'm going to have to, you know, trademark this one. <laughs> The idea is that deep breathing are, is connected to relaxation, or if you're into other kinds of sex, then with breath, you can tap into the kind of intensity atmosphere that you want to. If you're a more advanced lover, then a certain specific kind of breath can help you circulate arousal in your body. It can help you prolong 
the time that you spend in arousal, but with prolonging, and I did make a video about lasting longer, with prolonging, there's a certain way in which you do it and a certain timing in which you do this. It's not, so there's a technique around deep breathing for more advanced lovers. The second thing, skill, that I would encourage people to work on and that is an ingredient in exquisite lovemaking is exploration or a sense of adventure. So first of all, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're gonna have sex with God knows how many people and you know, it, it doesn't mean quantity. The exploration and the sense of adventure isn't always given by numbers of people, by variety of people. Yes, there is that component, but if you base it just on that, then if you want my opinion, you have a very narrow understanding of what exploration is, and it's not necessarily the highest quality kind. It doesn't fulfill you. But this is a mindset perspective. Before you go for exploration in numbers and in variety, exploration as in quality of newness, of experiences and um, experiments that you try on, even just with yourself or with a committed partner, this is a mindset tool. And I'm gonna read you a quote that one of my YouTube followers left on a video that I did recently because he explained it so beautifully. He phrased it so beautifully that I told him I'd use it. And he said like this, many believe that adventure is dangerous and do not see that routine can be deadly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the kind of mind shift that I'm referring to when looking at what makes a lover exquisite. So what does that mean? It means opening up your mind, first of all, to understanding different wiring out there, tapping into your own body and understanding your body, what it needs, what it can offer in various conditions uh, in terms of time, intensity, restfulness, as opposed to being tired, um, physical condition, accessories to use, and so on. So exploring just with your own self, first of all, and exploring not just within your known zone, but also within your unknown zone. So yeah, mindset before anything else. Exploration can also mean taking inspiration from videos um, on a variety of sites, not just uh, pornography or mainstream pornography sites. Movies, a lot of mainstream movies that have nothing to do with pornography are extremely valuable in inspiration. And um, a list of movies, it's not exhaustive, but a list of movies that I go to for inspiration time and again, is Bliss. This is a movie from 1997. Another one is um, Venus à la Fourrure. That's French. And this is, um, in, in this movie, you're going to see the foundations of masochism. Um, the author, actually, this was, this is a movie made based on a play. And if you can tolerate French, because I know this movie was made in French, then, you know, I think you can also watch it with subtitles, but that's a movie that I would definitely encourage you to watch. Another movie, um, Memoirs of a Geisha, and the other one is Dangerous Beauty. These two come hand in hand, and they portray a lot about the um, confinement of the feminine or the females out there in exploration, and this is societal confinement. It's still happening nowadays when men explore with a lot of women and they also boast about it, so they brag about it. Wow, that makes them even more desirable or more challenging in guys' opinions, not just women's. When a woman shares about her exploration, or when she wants to share in terms of quantity, ah, man, we want those women to know what they're doing, but we hate the experience and the number of experiences that come with that. So that's one thing that um, these two movies, Dangerous Beauty and Memoirs of a Geisha, portray for us in the most beautiful way possible. 
Another two movies that I see out there, The Libertine and Chocolat, uh, and also Don Juan de Marco. What these two, these three have in common is Johnny Depp, <laughs> when he was young. Um, this guy played a three different roles in three different movies, but all these movies show the, again, exploration of the erotic, how the male or the masculine tries to understand the feminine, the traps that they fall into when they don't understand or when they don't rise up to the challenges that the women or the feminine presents to them. And it's not necessarily in experience. It's in relating to women, understanding women, allowing themselves to be inspired by women, dancing with women in terms of energy, dynamics, and so on. So yeah, if you want to understand exploration and adventure, sometimes even just movies or reading books, and a book that I definitely encourage you to read, aside from the one that I'm working on, which is Your Orgasmic Intimacy, is a book called The Erotic Mind. It's a book written by a therapist in the 1990s, highly valuable. And the book that I'm writing, Get Your Orgasmic Intimacy, is not you know, a copycat of that book, but I did my best to bring structure and also examples just like Jack Morin, who wrote The Erotic Mind, did in his book. It was that powerful, yes. Okay, so the next skill or tool on my list <clears throat> is self-knowledge. Now, what do I mean or what am I referring to when I'm saying self-knowledge? First of all, just answering, being able to answer, not just for yourself, but for others as well, a few questions, such as, and I'm going to read them to you. I made them into a list so that I don't forget anything. What turns you on? Yeah. How easy is it for you to not just know that about yourself, but also communicate it to, you know, send the message across to your partner? What turns you on? How easy for you is to say, what turns me on is, and then you say it. How much arousal can you carry in your body? Why is this important? Well, not everybody's ready at the same time. And being able to carry your arousal without exploding too fast or freaking out too fast because nothing is happening is a skill that will make you an exquisite lover. What do you need in order to maintain your arousal for longer periods of time or increase it if need be? What do you need to maintain or increase your arousal in your body? Another thing about self-knowledge, how well do you receive feedback? Yes. Or feed forward for that matter. There's a difference. Feedback about what happened, feed forward about what the other person might want to happen in the future. Two approaches there worth considering. How well do you listen to your partner's desires, needs, or requests? And I'm not saying hear them, I'm saying listen, meaning you hear what they say and then you actually take that into consideration and apply it. That is a skill, the art and the, the ability to listen to somebody. It is a skill involved in exquisite lovemaking. What turns you off? And how do you communicate that to your partner? This is still in the realm of self-knowledge. And how do you cope with the times when maybe your sex drive isn't so high? It can happen to everybody, no matter what you are, man, woman, intersex, um, young, adult, old, low sex drive can happen to anybody at any given point. How well do you cope with that? That is part of you being an exquisite lover. And for that matter, how do you cope with your partner's low sex drive periods? Do you freak out? Do you make them feel bad? Do you find ways to cope with it for within yourself? Do you um, communicate around this? Do you hold space? Do you let them know that you're still there for them? Even if maybe those periods are long, like months. That is 
you know, the exquisite lovemaking isn't just what you do in those moments when you're actually engaging into it. It's also outside of those moments. How do you set the scenery overall? Yeah. And obviously, how open are you to explore? And if you're still worried about this one, then go back to the previous point that I made, all about exploration. Okay. And I'm not going to get into each one here because I could write an, a third book <laughs> about this. Uh, you could make an entire uh, show, TV show about this. So there's no time in just one video. But the idea is that you have them on your list. This is the stuff that... It's not an exhaustive list, but this is the stuff that makes you an exquisite lover and it, in terms of self-knowledge, okay? Everybody should be asking themselves at least some of these questions eventually. Okay, the fourth thing on my list is an accessories kit. Yes, but here the catch. The accessories list is not for the other people, it's for you. And this isn't just from hygienic perspectives, okay, you can't really take a toy and use it on God knows how many partners you have. You take a toy or a tool or anything to use it on yourself. And before you say, why would I want to just play with myself? Well, um, those can be used with other people also. Let me share with you a story here. Before I started exploring, as in learning, growing into this area, I kept trying to find a perfect a matching compatible partner for me. And one time in my exploration, somebody asked me about toys. And I said, uh, I don't have toys. At the time I didn't, I didn't have them. And the reaction came, man, what a bummer. I was like, why? Uh, my body's here. But the person wanted to explore more. So um, it didn't like, at the time I was like, okay, whatever, whatever rocks your boat. I don't have them, you know, good luck finding somebody who does. In time, I didn't get those toys because I wanted to impress anybody. I got those because it actually made sense for me to explore. And every now and then when I would explore with other people, maybe somebody would be open because not everybody's open to exploring with a person and that person coming with toys also. But the idea is that for some people who are looking for exquisite lovemaking, getting your own accessories kit is a thing. Yeah. And knowing what accessory works for you, when, how, and the accessories don't have to be focused around just your genitalia. It can be a variety of creams or perfumes or uh, massage oils or mitts and gloves and towels that you use to maybe you do massage oil, um, massage with oils and you use those with warm water. Everybody knows that. So you have your accessories there in order to enhance the experience. And that's what a resourceful kit actually is for everybody out there. Now, again, these are for you to definitely explore on your own, but also whenever you find somebody that wants to explore more, then you have this toolkit that applies to you and you share with these people that you're engaging. Okay, this is what works, this is how it works, this is how I enjoy it on me, okay? Yeah, that can be part of exploration and exquisite lovemaking. For whoever is open, for whoever is confident enough to you know, see the beauty in that and not get um, intimidated, frightened, uh, freaked out by that and so on. Because if that's not your thing, I, that wasn't my thing for many years, then by all means, you don't have to have an accessories toolkit. Just know that at a certain point, you might want to explore with this. Okay, and the last thing that I have, ooh, intimate communication skills. Let me tell you, that's super, super important. So, so many people actually don't know how to communicate around this. It's still a thing in the 21st century. Yeah, believe it or not. Why is that? Well, first of all, because we have so many anxieties, so many worries, so many fears, um, 
so much tension around our body, around our performances, maybe on previous experiences that we've had and they've left some scars there. And some people have very sensitive egos and all of these combined make it super hard to talk in intimacy about what you would love to explore, what maybe wasn't so great for you and being able to share that without somebody else taking it personally, you know, taking it as a, an insightful discussion that maybe they can help them in the future orient themselves better. So intimate communication is extremely hard to come across. Uh, in Nobody teaches you that yet. Maybe in the 22nd century, that will not be a thing. But in the 21st century, it still is a thing. You're not taught. You're not taught in school. Many people don't speak about this in their family still. Um, many people's parents didn't get this kind of education. And a lot of the stuff that is out there isn't necessarily focused just on communication. And I have a very simple example here also. In the years that I've been doing events uh, before the pandemic broke, I used to have events that were just around talking and communication and events that were based around practices and doing and they were announced as such. So they involved partial or full nudity, everybody that would subscribe to those or uh, join in, they knew what to expect. And the thing that I've noticed was that with the talking, communicating, light practices that didn't involve nudity, mainly women signed up. When I did events for couples uh, with partial or full nudity, and it was announced, yeah, more guys signed up. And this didn't happen just once, it happened many times. And obviously we couldn't go through with that because there was, with the practices you actually needed, the guys that signed up were heterosexual. So they needed female part counterparts. They weren't open to exploring with other guys. It seemed pretty awkward to them and you know nobody would push anybody else's boundaries. So why was that? Why were women subscribing more to uh, events that were focused around communication and guys around doing? Because that is how we go about sexuality. Women want to talk about stuff more. Guys just want to do things. And if you're not committed and you just want to hook up with people, I'll ask you this. How much time do you spend with the people that you just hook up with to talk about sex in advance? what you like, what you dislike, what you need, what you love. How much of that time do you actually like, do you, do you have a date just to talk about it before you actually do it? Considering that in most cases, these are people that you don't know. And it's not so talking about sex, not talking about, um, you know, over a glass of wine about what your life is, how, what you're doing overall. Um, what does your day look like? What are you into? You know, just feeling the other person. No, no, no. One date to talk about sex, to get an idea, you know, the self-knowledge questions. What turns you on? What turns you off? How much arousal can you carry in your body? How do you intensify? How do you not intensify? What happens if it doesn't work out? Uh, how much do you talk about compatibility and sizes? wow, you have no idea how many awkward hookups happen out there because people actually weren't forewarned. I'm super small. I'm kind of big. Um, for me, penetration is painful. For somebody else, maybe they need it fast. They really don't have time or preference for foreplay. And because they just go, you know, blindly go into a sex date, they wake up with a lot of stuff that they have to handle and they had no clue about it. Intimate communication, if you're in the hookup, is even more important if you're as to, opposed to being in a committed relationship. Because in a committed relationship, that, that is bound to happen anyway, because you're committed. And if you've committed to somebody just, you know, not for talking with them also, then I don't know why the heck you're committed to them <laughs> anyway. There's no relationship without talking about things that's you know part of the compatibility between two people it's their mindset it's their physicality it's their emotional triggers for the good 
emotion is the biggest aphrodisiac and you will never know exactly what kind of emotion turn people on unless you actually talk about these things. So intimate communication and yeah, the ability to communicate, that's part of the compatibility there. Um, joke, you know, on me this time, I'm a big talker as you've seen in my videos. Not many guys find that arousing. You know, it's part of the curse of the coach, I guess. <laughs> anyway, I'm not doing this to get, you know, a line of guys behind me. I'm doing this for myself and I'm doing this because I know that it's needed and I enjoy helping others tap into their potential. And yeah, in coaching, there's a lot of talking, a lot of talking in programs out there that you have, you know, even if you go to events, there's a lot of talking. You can't really go to an event without talking, even if you're doing the event on the physical stuff, you know, the actual practices, which aren't, by the way, they don't mean sex, engaging in actual sex. That, that's a different thing. Uh, that's not, that, that's in certain communities that are actually centered just around that. And me as a coach, I don't facilitate that kind of events. I facilitate events for personal growth. I'm, I'm in the personal growth side of sexuality. And the experiences that people have, they get to apply at home as a homework with their partners, with themselves, with whoever they choose to in safe conditions and so on. But communication is important. And yeah, it's the last thing that I put here on the list. This is not an exhaustive list, but this is extremely important. Intimate communication skills. And part of communication is, by the way, the ability to listen. Yes. So how do you work on all these? Relaxation, deep breathing, um, self-knowledge, um, an accessories kit. Um, what else was on my list? Communication, obviously. Exploration and sense of adventure. So how do you work on all these? Well, there are, there's a variety of ways on working on them. The way that I facilitate this for people is through events, programs, and individual coaching. Now, I've sought a way to mix these because they were, they were always different. So I had live events that were happening just with the people that I was physically in the same city with. There, were, there are still online programs that people get to watch pre-filmed content and there's a lot of content that I have on my site. And then there was the actual guidance that I offer in individual sessions, whether it's one-time session or the actual one-on-one -on -one coaching program that I have. So lately I've sat down and I said, okay, I need to mix these because it's always more complex than just taking one of them. As such, I've made huge changes in my Sex Dojo for Women program, meaning I've added more content. You have now the equivalent of 19 weeks of exploration, 19 weeks of new stuff, new stuff, never the same thing, 19 weeks, okay? That's uh, four months and above, you know, four months and a week or something like that. So 19 weeks of new content, but I also added the coaching component. So nowadays, when people sign up for my Sex Dojo for Women, they actually sign up in a limited amount of time, and then they stick with me for the long, and we have every now and then group coaching calls where I answer questions that I receive in advance or people ask their live. If that rocks your boat, in terms of costs, it's definitely not as expensive as the individual coaching. It isn't just the price that you would pay on a pre-filmed course and that's it because I have an investment there already. So if you're interested in that, then check out my Sex Ojo for Women. There are limited times when I open up, sign up. I sign up a group of women and then I stay there with them, help them what better understand those practices get them to actually do those practices you would think that women would just do the 19 weeks and that's it no they actually need to be sometimes motivated helped to overcome some blockages because blockages do come up or just the inertia of their lives 
because there's nobody there to motivate them or to inspire them. So in this program, you also get me. So there's a combination between just online and coaching. So if that rocks your boat, ladies, there's a link under this video, check it out. If the time frame for sign up is there, tap into it, take it, you'll not regret this. And if you're a guy, then the only two ways I can help you is with online coaching, meaning one hour call or the six weeks package of coaching, because sometimes you need a more sustained time to fix or to work on things. Why aren't there programs for guys? Because I didn't come in a man's body and the type of programs that I have, they're around practices, you know? Practices for women. I can't facilitate practices for men because I don't have a man's body. And there are many caveats and traps there. And I know about them, not just from my colleagues from training, but also from speaking to actual partners, speaking to other people that are facilitating. And I already know you don't play with that stuff. So the only thing that I have for men is communication in one-time sessions or in multiple sessions, depending on their interest topics that they are working on and so on so check out the link under this video and if there is a free slot because i don't take that many people at the same time then you're mo most welcome to sign up and dive into a session with me so i hope these help you and uh, i wish you a rich and juiceful sexual exploration and i wish you to become the exquisite lover that you want to become